Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we're going to send crew to our lunar station using the Orpheus 2. That's the first thing. It's already built and ready to roll out, so let's do that. We've also got a Ganymede launcher building the Earth to du Jupiter transfer windows in 202 days, so we don't need to do that just yet. We'll see how much time we have left after this particular transfer and uh, figure out what we can get away with doing. We finished uh, getting the mature cryogenic engine, so we have the M1, but we haven't unlocked the M1, and I don't think I'm going to unlock the M1, M1, uh, because it costs 770000 to unlock, and that's, that's, that's a pretty big chunk of our budget for just one engine, and it's not, it doesn't really inspire me, frankly. Uh, I think I can do without. Uh, fortunately, we were able to upgrade the J2 on our stages to J2S, which is a little bit better. I don't know where the J2X comes in or if it ever will, but uh, we got the J2S on the Ganymede launcher there, so it has a little bit more delta V right now. Okay, so let's proceed. All right, here we are with the Olympus rocket. It looks like we have Christian, Wilnerd, and Bob, pilot, engineer, and scientist. Um, well, let's hope everything goes all right for them. Thrall up. SAS is on. And uh, we should probably line up with the moon. All right, here we go. Make sure the thrall is up. All lined up with the moon. And ignition. And launch. Okay, 16 NK-33s are going. It's nice to finally get to the extravagant part of our space program. The part where we get to do things that uh, haven't been done, like build a station around the moon and send people to it. This is what it's all about. Alright, we are past the speed of sound. Everything is looking all right. I did not put the J2S on this particular launch. So just a normal J2 here. I believe I fixed the RCS thrusters, but we'll have to see. Okay, we actually want to light the NK-43s first, so let's scooch them down. Ignition. Okay, and set. Off go the boosters. And the next staging doesn't look right, as usual. Okay, launch escape system off. Okay, here we go, seven more seconds. The NK-43 burn has proceeded nominally. And that's the end of that. Separation. And ignition. Okay, and we have the J2 engine running, and on to orbit. So this time we have Arizine and N204 down here, which is what the RCS thrusters should be configured for. Uh, the fuel up here is locked right now. Okay, getting close to the end of the burn here. And that's good enough, since we're going to be transferring out 273 by 204. Okay. Well, let me do some plotting. We've got plenty of delta V to work with, though. Okay, well, I've plotted as proper a free return trajectory as I could. Uh, we've got a moon periapsis in 2 days and 17 hours of 106 kilometers. And uh, here on the Earth periapsis side, we have a 98 kilometer periapsis in 5 days and 12 hours. So even if we do nothing, we'd come back with that periapsis and we could easily deep th uh, dip that further into the atmosphere if necessary. 
I don't anticipate any problems like that, but uh, here we are just in case. And then uh, a after we come back, that's that app lapses there, which we will never hit. Uh, so all is well. Uh, there is the matter of actually rendezvousing with the station, though. As soon as we get into Lunar SOI, we'll have to make an adjustment because right now this is our orbit and there's the orbit of Moonport 1. So we'll want to go down a little bit and try and hit it uh, slightly more properly, uh, though some of the work will have to be done as we're uh, making orbit around the moon. Hopefully it's not going to be too much, but we should have enough fuel for everything. Okay, so on that note, let us proceed. Okay, approaching the node, RCS on, node, and yes, they're firing this time. Much better. Okay, ignition. Unfortunately, the whole free return thing requires it to the burn to be correct to the second and to the hundredth of a meter per second, so uh, we're probably going to be a little bit off. Okay, here we go. Our orbit is extending very quickly. And, uh, okay, I'll just, uh, I'll just use RCS then. Probably we can abandon the whole free return trajectory uh, at the mid-course adjustment and thereby adjust better to Moonport 1's orbit instead of waiting until we get into Lunar SOI. Well, okay, uh, it's really having trouble holding prograde right now. Maybe the kick from the decoupler will give us a little bit more of a boost, and we'll see where that leaves us. Okay, and... It'd be nice if it pointed prograde, though. Oh, we, we used up all the RCS fuel, that's why. Okay, well, whatever. Separate. I think that leaves that stage to crash into the moon, so that's good. I generally think that's a good idea. Okay, we've got an approach. Alright, so we're headed to the moon, folks. Chris Leon, Wilnerd, and Bob. The question is, um, how close can we get to that station's orbit before we enter Lunar SOI? So let me do some plotting. Okay, this 9.2 meter per second burn in a day and three hours seems like the best deal. It'll leave us, instead of having a 20 degree inclination difference with respect to the station, we'll only have 5.6, and that we can correct as part of our lunar orbit insertion once we get there, since the ascending node is right where our orbit touches. Well, our orbit is uh, pretty close to the periapsis, and our orbit touches the station's orbit. So that seems like a good idea. All right, let's move. We really don't need to maintain orientation with respect to the sun because our solar panels are very overpowered for this pod. Okay, we need to activate engines. Uh, yeah, I guess we should. Alright, I think that's good enough. Let's get into Lunar SOI. Okay, I had only unlocked the top tank here before, and now I unlocked this fuel as well, and we have 2,245 meters per second. Uh, we've got... Uh, plot for orbit around the moon that gives us a high orbit like this and that's in order to get an encounter with the station at a separation of 2.6 kilometers. It doesn't tell me what our relative velocity will be with that at that point and uh, it costs a little bit more than orbit around the moon normally would because we have to add a little bit of uh, what you got uh, inclination fix as well as a radial fix as well. So, yeah. Okay, we'll hope it's not too much, but I think we'll have enough altogether. So, here we go. Okay, let's go for it. And you can see uh, inclination, radial component, lots of 
it's not it's not the best sort of burden but all to make sure that we get an encounter right away after one orbit okay our closest approach distance is shaping up here and but uh, 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 hmm not as quickly as I thought it was <laughs> There we go. Don't know why we ended up with a 0.46 relative inclination. We'll do another correction to fix that. It looks like we're still 14 kilometers out. Okay, so uh, that's that intersect point. So it's flashing, flashing in and out as usual. Neither of these intersect points shows anything like that closest approach distance. So that's a little makes it a little bit hard here. I guess we'll just have to go with that 8.9. I'm not seeing it right now, so I can't really plan. Or maybe I could just do a attempted burn here. Just a tiny little test burn with the RCS. Well, just turning this way seems to help. Okay, yeah, well, uh, less than 100 meters right there. Looks like uh, we could get an arbitrary distance close to the station. Very good, though it's still not showing it in the official KSP display. No relative distance, uh, no relative inclination. Okay, now it's showing it, sort of. It says 0.4 kilometers. Um, target negative relative velocity. Looks like it's got to be more than 200. That's a lot. But still should leave us with enough fuel to get home. That's important. So the plan is after we dock and um, stay for a while, then we'll try and fulfill this contract by um, staying in orbit for 20 hours before returning home. I'll have to remember that. Okay, let's start matching velocities. Oh, paper and feed lines. And... Okay, we are now about 150 meters away from Moonport 1. We've just designated the Apollo docking system port as our target. And so let's just get a little bit further in before we start lining up, I guess. I haven't tried to move Moonport 1, turn it towards us or anything like that. We'll try and dock legitimately as we should. And then I'll try and turn it if everything goes wrong. Yep. But I'll try to be patient. Okay, here we go. Apollo docking system, Apollo docking system, and come on, find your inner, ma inner magnetism. You know you want to. Yes, all right, we have docked. And uh, frankly, the station doesn't provide, I mean, the capsule is pretty big, is what I was trying to say. Uh, so yeah, we do need to expand the station, but, but here they are three Kerbals, they've got 315 days of food, water, and oxygen, and everything looks good. So we have three crew around the moon. And that's an interesting camera for Chris Lee and Wilnerd and Bob. A little bit more closer up than I thought it should be. But no problems indicated, and they can hang out here for a while. I don't know, it started at a countdown clock. Um, I guess as a test, we can wait 20 hours through the countdown clock. And after that 20 hours, we'll see if this stays fulfilled or whether when we come back later, it's going to be not fulfilled. It says launch a new vessel is not checked off, so we might have a bit of a problem and might need to use a different vessel to satisfy this because uh, it might not like the fact that it docked with this. The station part is not a new vessel after all. Only the 
crew capsule is, so it might be irritated by that. We filled the orb orbit thing, but it looks like it doesn't like the whole setup with it, and so it's not check marked to uh, launch a new vessel. So we might have to send something else to fill that contract. Anyway, uh, they're around here now, and we'll leave them here to do whatever it is they do around around the moon when there's no real science modules here. Speaking of which, we should probably send some science stuff over to the moon, huh? That's an interesting thought. Let's go back to the Space Center. Alright, well, I spent quite a lot of time trying to figure out what we should do next, and I came up with this. I've been wanting to try out this tiny little Gemini lightweight lander, which accommodates a single Kerbal, and is only 0.2 tons. It seems sort of cheaty, uh, but you'll note it is RP0 compatible and realism overall compatible, of course. Uh, it's from the FASA pack, and uh, yeah, uh, I guess it's legal to use this little thing. I've also snuck in... Oops, come on. Oh, I might need to restart this thing. It's been a while. Uh, Able Avionics package is right there, so we're not going to launch this crude just yet. Uh, it's nose cones keep wanting to go inside for some reason. Uh, it has little fairings like that, just for looks. And two Gemini lunar lander engines. And uh, we actually have the official Gemini lander legs that are supposed to go with this pod, but I have no idea how these are supposed to go with that. Um, I don't know where the tanks are supposed to go or anything like that. So we've got two of the lunar uh, Gemini lander engines and in total, this has 4,700 meters per second of delta V. You can see 4,717. So that should be enough to land on the moon and take off again. And it's got a little docking port on the tail. Boy, did, does that uh, cut into our delta V, by the way. You can see 4,717. Uh, that, that's uh, 180 meters per second right there. And that a bunch got if uh, we resize our, the lander legs that are really heavy too uh, though this is uh, lighter than other lander leg possibilities but uh, everything really cuts into our delta v budget when it comes to when you have a pod uh, so small but anyway we put up with that uh here's a thor delta avionics unit for the rest of the rocket and hmm actually i don't know if we need that well well first of all uh, I don't think that's enough avionics for everything. Are you sure Mr. Avionics is okay thing? Guy? Because uh, this is a 534-ton rocket. And I forgot to put another avionics score on here. So it should be saying, no, this is not enough avionics. But it's not saying that. Which is curious. Hmm. Anyway, uh, uh, going on, our... Transfer stage to the moon is this. This is the RD58M now. This is uh, upgraded engine. Its maximum burn time is 12 minutes. I've got burning for 10. And it's got five ignition. Oh, sorry, four ignitions. I'm hoping it can transfer us to the moon and start our uh, capture around the moon. It's got kerosene and oxygen, so hopefully it won't lose too much delta V along the way. Uh, in any case, uh, making orbit around the moon and docking with our station, because we're not sending a Kerbal over, we'll have one of the Kerbals at the station do the landing. Um, this will use some of its uh, existing Delta V. We could uh, launch it unfueled and launch it on a smaller rocket. That's one option, but the cost isn't too much. Uh, and um, we uh, then don't have to send another refueler vessel if it only uses a small portion of its total Delta V to finish orbit and do the rendezvous, then it's not going to uh, take too much to refuel it. It's In total, I think it's got mm, a little over 2,000 units of Aerozine and about the same of N204. So that's the thought. It, it connects, by the way, to the docking port with propellant only, not the Apollo docking system, because it's too small. Anyway, uh, after that, our new rocket here, it is a new rocket, has a J2S core. Uh, let me make, double make sure that we've got that on. Oh no, it's not J2S, it's actually the wrong. Aha, good thing I checked. Okay, so let's uh, redo this. 
it's not reading the right delta v though um because we we're staging that before we separate off the boosters um the real delta v is more like this and we could stand to make the core a little bit bigger now which would be good it uh, looks a little bit underwhelming compared to the boosters anyway we don't want to push it to the point where it has a very little delta v though i mean, not delta v thrust weight ratio uh that's plenty of delta v okay so now it's better and our sea level thrust weight ratio isn't that great we could adjust that by reducing the utilization on the boosters so well it's sort of like that um, it occurs to me I need some comms on that since I don't have any crew okay all set on that and that's the idea the remarkable thing about this is it only takes 15 days to build so well we can we can uh, try this out nice and quick okay but before we launch the lunar lander light we do have the Ganymede landers uh, mid-course adjustment to take care of so uh, let us do so and do so carefully because this is a critical um, contract mission and a very touchy one and oh yes of course there's a more than 20 minute delay to think about I should have uh, come here a little bit earlier then huh okay let's see on the bright side we're still very obviously aimed at Jupiter that's good no hijinks about that very mild 45 meters per second and then we'll have to get into orbit there and that's another 5373 I think everything is fine here after getting into orbit around Jupiter and matching orbits with Ganymede we'll have 1200 to uh, lower our orbit and then we have the fuel in the probe itself uh, to actually land which I apparently can't click on right now let me make sure it's locked yep it's got more than 2000 in there okay well this is still going on and we'll leave it be for now let's make sure that the alarm is set for the next maneuver Hmm, this is yet again a very stubby rocket. Somehow very Kerbal. Makes me feel like an upper stage may be warranted though. Um, and I never did put another avionics controller on. So I guess we're going to find out what happens on that score too. Throw up SES. Oh. Okay, I think I found out what's going to happen with that. SAS isn't uh, activating, so that probably means there's no control. Um, let's, uh, I, I think uh, we might have rushed this one. How about recovering active vessel here? Okay, well I added controllers to each of the boosters and somehow it got lifted a bit too far off the ground. But I'm still not getting SAS. Now this is more than enough to control this rocket. Each of the Thor avionics units uh, can handle 130 tons. So just the ones on the boosters should be enough to control this. Uh, 130 times 4 is 520. Um, so why don't we get SAS? Hmm. Well, it's not a very expensive rocket and there's no Kerbal on board. Uh, it's possible Smart ASS can handle this, so uh, we'll do that, and I'll have to see what's up otherwise. Um, can we turn on? No, we can't. We can't turn on RCS either. Hmm, that's not going to work out for us. All right, uh, let me roll this back again. I think it's the issue with the pod interfering with the avionics. We'll review in the VAB 
Uh, this is very disappointing though. Okay, so let's review. Uh, we've got Thor Delta Avionics units on each of these. Unfortunately, they're sort of tucked in weirdly, but uh, Thor Delta Avionics units indeed have 130 tons of control, and there's four of them. Uh, it does not say that they have SAS, so let's take a look at that situation, but that shouldn't preclude me turning on and off RCS. Uh, up here we have another Thor Delta Avionics unit, so we have uh, 650 tons of control up till there. And then finally we have the Able Avionics package there. And the Able Avionics package um, does have SAS. So we should have had SAS. And uh, we, we did have power. We had the 11,200 electric charge there. So that's not an issue. Mm, maybe not enough communication, but uh, let's see. Well, this one has an integrated Omni of 300 kilometers. That should be good enough for the launch pad. And the Thor Delta Avionics unit. Just want to check. Oh, and the Thor Delta does have SAS. I missed that. Uh, it has only 40, but still. Uh, we were on the launch pad and couldn't do anything. I'm going to try and build a new one of these. Let's... I don't know. I mean, um, uh, it's very annoying to have the situation where... Um, the fact that you have an uncrewed pod uh, destroys the ability to control the rocket. Uh, so you can never test an uncrewed pod. It seems that that's the case in this install. I'm sure it's not the case in all installs. It's just this one, as far as I know. So, yeah. But, uh, well, I guess uh, if we add some more food, water, and oxygen, we could send some Kerbal there. Okay, nine days. Guess we'll take it. Um, yeah, I guess we'll try and launch a Kerbal with it then. I do intend to launch this. Bit of a risky mission. New launcher and everything. But uh, that's what they forced me to do, darn it. Okay, well, I've selected Valentina for this dangerous and dubious test mission. Having no other choice, we are going to uh, time warp to make sure that we do have a shot at hitting the moon. Actually, even on an off-plane transfer, we could hit the moon, but still. Best to give it every bit of ease that we can. I'm sure the game will find ways to make it difficult. All on its own. Alright, well now we can engage SAS, throttle up, and get everything ready. Ignition. And launch. Off we go. much smaller lunar launch. Don't ask about abort modes here. It's got plenty of fuel at least. Abort to orbit is definitely the way to go. Well, Valentina's thrilled. Wonder what it looks like inside there. Well, pretty soon we can light the J2 since its ISP will be fairly optimal. Yep, let's do that. Okay, we have J2 ignition. No point sparing the G forces when Valentina's our Kerbinot. We can throttle the NK 33s anyway. Okay, boosters are out, throttle up. Oh, I wonder why things are overheating. That's weird. Oh 
those went off a little bit sloppily. Why is the main tank overheating? That's pretty darn strange, isn't it? I mean, we're at like 80 kilometers. Things are just uh, a bit weird with this rocket, one way or another. Alright, fairing separation. See, the internal view looks like this. Pretty cozy. Has little life support dials, very important. Not bad. I'm not entirely sure how the electric charge is going to work out, though. We'll definitely have to be very careful to orient with respect to the sun, but still, this wasn't supposed to transfer with a Kerbal in. I don't know if the solar panel is going to be enough. Well, plenty of extra Delta V here. This rocket can definitely carry more up. Okay, about to make orbit here. I guess we should have let that stage descend, but, well, didn't want to use too much out of here. We'll separate it off now. Okay, test RCS. RCS is fine. Um, let's lock the lander's fuel right now. Well, we'll make the transfer to the moon, and then uh, Valentina has basically nine days to rendezvous with the lunar station to survive. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, we're probably a little late for the burn considering it is a ten minute stage, but here we go. I'm probably just going to ditch this RD-58 stage once we complete translunar injection because um, we don't want to carry this Thor Delta avionics unit with us. It's just too much on the power consumption, so we'll ditch it and hopefully then our power consumption will be alright. Okay, so throttle up and uh, it's very stable. Ignition. go. Yeah, a little bit late. We'll see how it goes. Also, suspiciously less stage time than I thought there would be. I thought it was going to be eight, uh, 10 minutes. Uh, it was only 9 minutes something. Okay, getting ready now. Mm, stop. Ah, too far. Um, or is it just right on, actually? Uh, yeah, it's pretty close. It was a pretty good timing. Alright, get rid of that. That seems to be what we're doing. Okay, now we have to assess the power situation. Actually, if the power is too low, uh, we could actually retroburn right now with the lander and stay in low Earth orbit and then try to attempt a rescue very quickly. That'll be the best thing to do. But anyway, set. Because this has, what, whatever, uh, 4,700 meters per second. Um, let's not use all that fuel. Let's just use this stuff at the bottom here. Well, that's only 75, but we only need to do some turning and minor adjustments for now. Okay, so throttle is down. Okay. So, this is not the best angle to the sun. Let's turn a bit. And let's prepare persistent rotation. Looks like it's recharging, so I think we're go to uh, head for the moon. I uh, don't see our approach at all.
Oh no, there it is now. Hmm. Okay. Uh, it's blinking in and out. I think there's a suitable cliffhanger. What's gonna happen to Valentina? Will Valentina be alright? Will she get to the moon and uh, dock with the station safely? Why Why do my nose cones always go down like that? Um, that's, that's another interesting question because the, the nose cone is obviously supposed to be on top of the tank, not not in the tank like this. Yeah. Anyway, but that's a totally different question. Right now, Valentina's on her way, and we'll find out what happens to her in the next episode. On that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.